Good afternoon, all. I'm Sebastian Yen, and the technical lead for cholera here in Nigeria. In 2021, Nigeria had uh, the most devastating uh, outbreaks of cholera, precisely uh, 111,062 suspected cases were recorded uh, from 33 states and the federal capital territory. You can see from the spot map, uh, virtually all the northern states were affected, uh, mostly states like uh, Baoshi, Jigawa, Kano, Zafara, Kassina, and Kebi, uh, who accounted for 85% of the total cumulative case in 2021. As at uh, June 2022, going forward, uh, we have also started having uh, cholera cases. Precisely now, 30 states have reported cholera uh, from 141 uh, local governments. Four out of them have also recorded over 100 cases uh, most especially state like Cross River, which is bordering uh, the Cameroons. So we have been able to have uh, cross-border related uh, interventions uh, with the Cameroonian uh, countries, country representatives, uh, mostly supported by uh, WHO uh, and MSF. Well, uh, we are not new to OCV. We started experimenting with OCV as far back as 2017. Uh, we have been able to actually uh, face our campaigns, both for preventive and reactive, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, recurring uh, cholera outbreaks. But for the preventive, uh, so far, uh, using our 2018 phase uh, plan that we developed, we have been able to actually experiment with OCV in states like uh, Borno State, Baoshi, Yobe, Jigawa, and some of the states also here closed in the north central part of the country recently in Benue. Uh, but for 2022 uh, preventive campaigns, uh, we have been able to also do a hotspot map for all the 774 local governments in Nigeria, uh, where we were able to prioritize and identify 22 states that are cholera hotspots with uh, 126 local governments. And that also uh, warranted our request to the, uh, uh, for the, the global stockpile, and we were able to actually be able to get uh, approval recently in February for 9.96 million doses to be used in 14 local governments. Uh, so far, we have been able to uh, access 1,039,065 doses for the next campaign that will soon come in three local governments of Kano states, precisely on the 16th to 20 July, uh, 2022. We first uh, developed our national strategic plan of action for cholera control in 2018, precisely in June, uh, supported by uh, WHO uh, and the GTFCC. Uh, however, this document did not actually meet the uh, 2019 reverse version of the NCP template which inform our needs to actually review this document. Uh, the main objective of Nigerian uh, uh, NCP is actually to reduce the burden of cholera in Nigeria by 80%. So we are having a control, uh, not an elimination here in Nigeria. So recently with the support of the uh, country support platform, uh, which is also domiciled here in Nigeria since uh, last year, uh, we had uh, colleagues from Geneva and also uh, uh, the CSP from Zambia uh, supporting uh, our own uh, counterparts here to review the 2018 National Strategic Plan for Cholera Control for another five years, uh, 2023 to 2027. So this is a, a process that is ongoing, uh, which we hope will be submitted by November uh, this year to the IRP. Now, the important thing about this one is that there is a high level commitment of government now uh, moving the leadership and coordination to the Office of the Vice President of Nigeria. The Director General of the NCDC, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and the Honorable Minister of Health Nigeria were recently at the World Health Assembly where they committed to this document and that informed the immediate response from the, the GTFCC with the deployment of their colleagues from Geneva to support this review, which is also, like I said, ongoing. Well, our achievements, over the years 
have been in the area of actually enhancing uh, advocacy, most especially in the area of uh, water sanitation and hygiene. Well, this country, Nigeria, actually has three administrative structures, the national, the states, that's the federal, state, and local government. So most of the issues related to cholera is in the sub-national, especially in the local government area. So we continue to actually advocate to make sure that the areas where we have deficits in the areas of wash and community perceptions of the disease uh, cholera is actually enhanced. Uh, SDDC over the years, since 2018, has been in the forefront of actually bringing coordination of response close to uh, the subnational level. So we have been able to establish uh, emergency operation centers uh, in all the 36 states and the federal capital territory to support uh, the utilization of incident uh, management structure in our response to outbreaks, especially cholera. Vaccination uh, uh, campaigns have been ongoing since I said, since 2017. And uh, this document is already available at the DTFCC, uh, which has supported our first campaigns, uh, especially the preventive. We have also been able to increase our network of uh, public health laboratories in the states uh, to support uh, a diagnosis, uh, most especially culture, which is the gold standard. It's still a far cry, but uh, we're still making effort to make sure that uh, the network of laboratories we have are supporting what we're doing. Our surveillance uh, structure is also one area that we have been able to uh, really strengthen. Uh, initially, it has been the uh, IDSR, Integrated Disease Surveillance and Response, that has been driving what we do. But we introduced what we call SOMAS, Surveillance Outbreak Response Management and Analysis System, which is a bio-surveillance digital uh, system supported by the German government uh, that gives us real-time reporting right from the local government uh, areas, where whatever is uh, entered at the LJ level we are seeing it at a national dashboard here in uh, the NCDC headquarter in Abuja. Capacity builders have always been ongoing, especially last year when we had this major outbreak. Uh, partners supported us, especially uh, WHO, in trying to build capacities in all these areas where we're having challenges of disease detection, uh, prevention, and response. We were also able to make sure that uh, deployment of necessary consumer goods, especially additive kits, uh, have been also enhanced uh, last year and is still ongoing. We recently also developed a national cholera case management guideline and treatment protocol uh, where all the key stakeholders uh, were actually assembled here in Abuja, uh, where we harmonize the treatment protocol, especially the one existing in Nigeria with, uh, at NCDC, the MSF document, the WHO document, into a one uh, document for the country Nigeria. Like I told you also, we are in the process of reviewing and uh, getting our NCP submitted at the IRP. But most especially also is the fact that uh, we have been able to establish what we call a subnational support department where I am the director now to make sure that all these areas identify, especially in the recent after action review of 2021 cholera outbreak are actually addressed. All the necessary graphs are strengthened going forward uh, onwards to what we envisage that will happen in this uh, year 2022. Well, challenges mostly are subnational. The issues of poor political commitment uh, uh, by the, the government of the states, the local government, non-involvement of key stake actors in the issue of cholera control have been recurring and continue to face us. We try to see that uh, this uh, Drivers of cholera are identified, mostly especially the areas where there is even poor collaboration with uh, line ministries of uh, water, health, education that are supposed to be very uh, strong in the, the, the drive towards cholera control in Nigeria. Access to water, uh, uh, inadequacy in uh, wash infrastructures. But open defecation is what this country actually made a declaration in, uh, precisely in November 2019 uh, for all the local governments, 774 to be ODF. Uh, all of them are expected to be open defecation free by 2025. 
well, it's still a far, far cry, but we're looking at that document, still uh, trying to see that we work in line with all the strategies that we identified to get this thing done. Uh, insecurity is a major challenge, even where you have the, the capacity in terms of a, a manpower, response, commodities, uh, vaccinations, so you are doing roll out during outbreaks, uh, banditry, communal conflicts, uh, kidnappings, uh, all these uh, challenges that are facing Nigeria now across all the 36 states and the federal capital territory. So these are one of the big hindrance of our success stories. And we think uh, we definitely have to really uh, strengthen all these areas to make sure uh, we don't carry it up to 2030. Well, uh, access to global stockpile of vaccination, like I said, we have been able to identify 126 local government that are cholera hotspots, which uh, request to the global level for vaccine has always been a challenge, and we hope that this meeting will help us address some of these issues. Our priorities for 2022-2023 is to finalize this document uh, to make sure that the National Cholera Plan is submitted uh, uh, to the GTFCC uh, by November, where I already told you we are looking into the issue of leadership to the office of the Vice President of Nigeria. We are also trying to make sure that we increase collaboration among the key stakeholders in cholera, uh, ministries of water, resources, ministry of environment, ministry of health, uh, education, women affairs, then the major key stakeholders as partners uh, responsible here in Nigeria, WHO, UNICEF, MSF, uh, supporting what we are doing. Uh, we also intend to make sure that the uh, capacity for diagnosis, especially uh, prioritization, uh, of uh, preposition on uh, RDT kits and strengthening the available areas where we can do culture are strengthened uh, uh, this year and next year. Access to more vaccines that will support uh, uh, response during outbreaks is also a priority in this country. And we hope that we will be able to establish cholera focal points, both at the federal, state, and local government level uh, to support cholera control in Nigeria. Thank you.